Have you ever played one of those story-based adventure games like Life is Strange or The Walking Dead and thought, hmm, this is cool and all, but what if I had this as a life sim? In comes Closer the Distance, a story-based life simulator that takes the concepts of graphic adventure games and blends it with a life sim, complete with hunger and need management and all. So, how successful is this novel concept? Well, let's examine the game and find out. Now what? Who should have it? Whoever needs it the most. What good could you do? You never met any of them. And you never met Angie. You're right. But being a musician, I have a good ear. <laughs> Maybe if I listen close enough, I can figure out- But while you're here, why don't you close the distance with us and consider subscribing to our channel and liking this video. You can also support us on Patreon if you're enjoying our content and tune in to our Tuesday and Thursday live streams, both on Twitch and YouTube. Closer to the distance takes us to the town of Yesterby, a town with only 13 people all of whom enter each other's houses without knocking and sleep with their jeans and shoes on. Huh? One of our main characters, Connie, and her family experience a tragedy when Connie's sister Angela dies in an accident. From here, we play as Connie and eventually some other select citizens of Yesterby in attempts to preserve Angela's memory while also trying to move on after grieving from this tragedy. With each character we're able to play as, new side stories come up that interweave with the overall narrative of accepting the death of a loved one while trying to do right by her by living. I'll briefly cover these side stories, but I won't go into detail so as to not give any spoilers, but besides Connie, we also follow the lives of Gallia, who is Angela's doctor, Zach, who is Angela's boyfriend, River, who is Angela's supposed best friend, and Lau, some creepy traveling musician who thinks he's some sort of white knight who's going to fix the lives of people he's never met in a town he's never heard of. Galia is dealing with the stress of balancing her relationship while also trying to help her best friend, who is Pia, Angela's mom. Zek becomes depressed and lost in life and can't accept Angela's death, but also feels like he has no place in Yesterby anymore. River is trying to help her dad build a boat lodge to grow Yesterby. Lau is just Lau, trying to give Angela's camera to someone in Yesterby, and he thinks he's helping, but everyone kind of seems to hate him. Out of all of these stories, including the main narrative with Connie, I think Zach's story was the most interesting. His relationship with Angela seems the most fleshed out and well-written, and his desire to leave Yesterby actually mirrors Angela's own desire to leave as well. And this is something her parents refused to understand and support, actually prompting Angela to leave the night that she died. The story I liked the least was the boring boat lodge storyline, which wasn't interesting at all, but for some reason the devs kept trying to shove this down our throat. Every character seemed to want to bring up the boat lodge as if it was some interesting development, but man, I can only hear a grown man complain to his daughter about not having enough of a budget to build some gaudy boat lodge so many times before I completely tune out. Connie's story is a bit weird. Her family can't seem to handle Angela's death. Angela talks to Connie and the other characters from beyond the grave. I don't really understand what the writers were trying to do here. Apparently, Angela was incredibly important to everyone and every single person needs to be checked up on. But Connie never talks to her own parents about the griefing process. It's a really weird narrative choice. I won't beat around the bush here. Most of the characters in Close to the Distance are insufferable. I really can't stand Pia. Connie's dad is just so not present that I even forgot his name, and River keeps talking about the boat lodge when everyone clearly seems annoyed by it, aside from her dad. Really, Zek's character is the only one I liked. He has some depth and development and his storyline ends really well. The overall framing device for gameplay is that the characters we can control are characters that Angela is influencing and speaking to. Angela is the narrator, but also the presence that helps the characters fulfill their desires. The game blends the story into a life sim, so to progress the story, we have to direct characters to do actions that will fulfill desires. Some of them lead to branching paths, while others are more set, single-choice actions. Still, other desires require multiple in-game days to complete. However, 
we do need to manage the character's basic needs as well in order to keep them happy and ready to fulfill the actions. If these basic needs, such as hunger, relaxation, and sociability, are not fulfilled, characters will tend to drop the actions that fulfill desires and instead go off and do something on their own. The kicker here is that when they go off and do something on their own, it often seemed to not be things that fulfilled these basic needs. Usually they just sat around. Connie specifically started to get really annoying because she kept going to write in her journal. Meanwhile, she was starving, which is why she wouldn't go talk to Zeg's dad about making more friends because for some reason that was very significant to Connie getting over Angela's death. NPCs and playable characters that you aren't currently controlling go off and do their own things in the world. You can freely move the camera and follow whoever you want, you just can't control everyone you want. Every so often, some important story event will happen. This is noted by an exclamation mark over the character's portrait. This can get overwhelming when multiple important events are happening at once. I've had upwards of three at a time. Some events seem to expire while others seem to wait for you. Regardless, I sometimes felt like I was missing out on parts of the story. In the late game, this ended up being fine as I started favoring Zek's story anyways and paying attention to his most of all. Still, the multiple storylines and life sim gameplay is interesting, but I feel like these systems clash and often just leave you either not progressing the way you want or missing out on parts of the story. The life simulation aspect is also not very in-depth. It isn't like The Sims where you can queue up multiple actions. No, instead, in Closer to the Distance, characters automatically do what you choose and will switch action upon choosing something else. Some actions are even time-gated or locked depending on your character's mood. All in all, the life simulation gameplay doesn't really seem to add much to the story or the game structure in general. You don't really get much choice simulation-wise, nor is it immediately noticeable how a character's status affects the story, if at all. I mean, sure, a character being hungry can lock you out of completing desire actions that can affect the story, but I would like to see how mood affects relationships with characters. We do have a relationship tracker, but it never is really prevalent. In fact, I never had to look at it at all in my playthrough. At the end of each in-game day, when everyone is asleep, you get shown a memory from Angela, which often signifies a new chapter in the story. When you successfully complete a character's main desire, these memories are replaced with a letting go sequence where Angela and the characters say goodbye and they let go of one another. At this point, you cannot play as that character anymore. This is sort of the main sign of progression in the game. The gameplay is almost elevated from graphic adventure games, but really it's far too limited and just leaves you thinking what could have been. I wish there were dialogue choices for more in-depth story-based gameplay. Really, most choices come up with Zek and River and and as I mentioned, River's story was very boring to me, but I suppose there being some choice at all through achieving various branching desires does allow for some replayability, which is a plus, but I question how limited that replayability is given that the gameplay systems clash and just lack depth. Close to the Distance goes for a muted cell shaded look. It kind of reminds me of the game Ashen, where colors are dull and characters are blocky, almost clay-like. They also don't have facial features, but this worked for Ashen since it was an aspect of the game's setting, plus there were flashy animations during combat which made up for things, along with a beautifully made world. Closer the Distance doesn't have much going for it. The town is bland and the character models look ugly and lazy. The character and animations are gross. Get used to watching them bobble their heads like someone hopped up on caffeine using a sock puppet while having a broken wrist. Some animations are incomplete too, like when a character turns around, sometimes their model will just turn without moving their feet. Idle animations are really weird too. Often the characters just undulate their bodies, which looks pretty humorous when you speed up the game. The most annoying thing is the god-awful UI. You constantly have a large box on the left side of the screen that blocks 25% of the scene. I couldn't find a way to minimize this. This box shows a character's status, so it could be useful, but why is it so obtrusive? It's more obtrusive than The Sims UI, and in that game, you need to pay more attention to a character's status. Oh, and to round it all off, the camera just wants to work against you at all times. You can move and adjust the camera, but it ends up moving on its own anyways, and the auto camera is just awful. It'll routinely clip into houses or parts of the world, and during an important event that's supposed to be hard-hitting, it just made me laugh and not take the story seriously. Ugh, and audio is also pretty mid in this game. 
The intro music is nice. It's a nice little guitar tune that ends up actually being the game's main theme. But when you get to that letting go sequence for the characters, there's a song that Lau's supposed to sing, and it's a very generic, breathy, soft rock song that just isn't good, and again, it feels very saccharine. It's like the game is telling me, oh, look, this moment is very important. Just listen to this deep music. The story is never really that good to get me invested, so this generic Ed Sheeran rip off song isn't going to change my mind. Other audio is just meh. Usually you'll be listening to small town ambient sounds. There aren't even audio cues when a character completes an action. It's almost like the game doesn't want you to know when to check up on other characters. Voice actors are usually bordering on just fine or pretty bad. Excuse me. Yes? I'm sorry to intrude. Are you Angela's family? We are. Name's Lau. I travel from town to town to play my guitar and gather inspiration. I wonder if any of these voices are actually AI generated or done with only one take because these just don't sound passionate. Voices often sound like first readings without any real character behind the voice. Okay, so I guess it's fair to say that I don't like this game. I will say that I did get into a meditative state when clicking around trying to get characters to do actions, but it doesn't come full circle to have any depth. All in all, this game took me about 7 hours to complete, and I lost that meditative feeling at the 2 hour mark. Stories aren't that great, aside from one which is mainly good in comparison to the generic hallmark and lifetime original movie level of writing that the rest of the game has. In fact, the stories are often confusing. I'd say that fans of graphic adventure games would like this, but I don't even think that's true. Why? Well, the whole story ends poorly and in an unsatisfying way. The side stories don't really come together and character relationships don't show depth in the end. Because of this very poor story, I can't even recommend this game to hardcore fans of story-based games. Top that off with an annoying UI, awful characters, bad graphics and sounds, and gameplay elements that are shallow and clash, and Closer at the Distance has me summoning the indie Krampus this time. Huh? Blanche, I was just bouncing around in my bubble when I realized there's actual work I could do. Uh-huh. Oh, you're talking about cleaning the schoolroom. I did that already. 